On December 10th, 1936, the United Kingdom and the world were shocked by the news that King Edward VIII had announced his irrevocable decision to abdicate his throne. He was the first monarch to abdicate the crown in 800 years. His motive? Love. Edward VIII, known to his family as David, could not conceive of a life without his beloved Wallace and even decided to give up everything in order to be free to marry her. Vilified by the crown, the government, and the media, Wallace was a divorcee who was considered a frivolous and overly ambitious woman. But who really was Wallace Simpson? Was she really a villain in the story of the British royal family, or just the opposite? Bessie Wallace Warfield was born into a wealthy Maryland family in 1896. After the death of her father when she was only five months old, she and her mother had to live off the reluctant support of her paternal grandparents. Despite living on a generous allowance, neither Wallace nor her mother were welcomed as part of the family. For all of her life, she was determined to have the social status that was due to her from birth. In 1916, Wallace married Army pilot Earl Winfield Spencer Jr. After years of abuse and violence, Wallace finally divorced him in 1927. The following year, Wallace met former Lieutenant Ernest Simpson. Even though Wallace was not really in love with him, she decided to marry him anyway. Wallace had already married for love, and it ended up being a nightmare. This time, she decided to marry for money and stability in 1928. The couple settled in London, where they would quickly become a member of the city's elite. It was at an exclusive party where Wallace met the then Prince of Wales, Prince David. The heir to the throne was not only very handsome, but also very charismatic, which gained him plenty of popularity with the British people. In 1934, Wallace and David formally began the relationship. David was truly in love, and decided to take Wallace to Buckingham Palace. The courts were scandalized, and his father was furious. Wallace's past was well known, and they did not want the reputation of their idolized heir to the throne and the royal families to be tarnished. Ignoring his parents and counselors, David maintained his relationship with Wallace. On her side, she couldn't help but fall madly in love with David, but divorce was not an option. In 1936, King George V passed away. David ascended to the throne as Edward VIII, and the situation then clearly changed for the couple. That year, Ernest Simpson and David met. David assured him that he wanted to marry Wallace, and Ernest agreed to divorce. Unaware of the meeting in which they decided her future, Wallace was enraged. Despite being in love, she did not want to divorce and have that double mark on her record. Still, Wallace and Ernest got divorced. In late 1936, David proposed to her without knowing that this would cause a constitutional crisis. Wallace was doubly divorced, and her two ex-husbands were still alive. As king, David was also the head of the Church of England, and thus a moral example to his nation. Parliament was firm. The king could not marry and keep his title. David had three options. Definitively break up with her, marry against Parliament law, or abdicate his throne. The country entered one of the worst constitutional crises in more than two centuries. While the government opposed the marriage, the people felt the royals were free to marry whoever they wanted. Although Wallace advised him not to abdicate, as this would make her the villain of the story, David finally decided to leave everything for her, regardless of the consequences. In December of that year, Edward VIII abdicated in favor of his brother, Bertie, who would become King George VI. David became the Prince of Windsor, and in June 1937, the couple were married in a lavish ceremony in France, where they settled. With the outbreak of World War II and after an untimely meeting of the couple with the Nazi High Command in Germany, Wallace and David were seen as enemies of the United Kingdom. 
Wallace was even rumored to be a spy for the Germans. To avoid further attention to the ex-monarch, in 1940, David was appointed Governor General of the Bahamas to keep him out of the public eye. Although Wallace hated her new position, she did not sit still. She turned to social work in the Bahamas, trying to clear her name. But it continued to get worse, because while the United Kingdom suffered the ravages of the bombings, she and her husband kept living their life of luxury outside the horrors of war. At the end of the war, the couple returned to France, and after being refused a job in the UK government, David and his wife resigned themselves to living in exile. With the untimely death of George VI in 1952, the royal family blamed Wallace for David abdicating and putting Bertie in a position of stress that he had not been destined for. Tensions between the royal family and the Duke and Duchess of Windsor lasted practically for the rest of their lives. In 1971, David was diagnosed with an inoperable tumor in his throat. Soon after, he suffered cardiac arrest, and in May 1972, David died, leaving his beloved Wallace behind. Wallace would live away from everything and in complete solitude for the next 14 years until she died in 1986 at the age of 89. Wallace was buried with her husband and life partner near Windsor Castle. <laughs>